your uh, names on those sheets that you hopefully have in your Bible, please do remember them. Um, and then also, um, don't forget about the... Yeah, don't forget about... Oh! Don't forget about the uh, uh, the fa foster and adoption uh, month. Um, that is important. And I'm and there are a lot of ministries too that that are focused on 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 you know um, orphaned kids and whatnot. Um, so, anyways. So, did you guys did you guys uh, remember the questions from last week? So, how much are you charged for not having the money? How much interest would you pay on a, on an eight thousand dollar car loan with a three percent interest rate and a four year term? Now, if you go to get a car loan, it, you'll probably find a, a, in used car lots they usually go from between seven to nine thousand. So eight thousand dollars is a very common car loan amount. Usually, it's between somewhere around three to five years. Uh, I've seen more recently a lot of three year loans. Um, so this isn't outside of the realm of possibility. Um, so what do you guys think? How much interest would you pay? I got $960. Okay. How did you figure that? Um, well, 3% of 8,000 times 4 years. Oh, I see. Or is it supposed to be a monthly thing? Well, we'll get to that. But the interest rate changes per month depending on how much principal is left. We'll get to that later, though. It, it didn't say how much count. Interest, you know, yearly, so I just went yearly. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah but uh, well, I'll talk about that later. Um, any other guesses? Good guess, though. You were actually not that far off. Any other guesses? It would be around the neighborhood of $500 in interest. So, and comparatively, that's not that bad, especially when you look to see how much interest you're going to be charged on the house loan. But remember, this is um, dependent on whether you don't miss any payments, <laughs> uh, <yeah>. buddy. <laughs> and depending on how how your um, credit is, obviously the better credit score you have, the better loan you're going to get. That's just a fact of the credit system. Um, so how much interest will you pay on a $50,000 house at 4% interest and a 30-year term? Actually... This is what I came up with, $35,934.75. That is extremely close. Oh my gosh, that is extremely close. I got 60000 I'm using the wrong account. Yeah, well... Um, I did it again yearly with that one as well. Okay. All right. I'll, we'll, we'll get to it later. It doesn't matter. But that, that was very close. Oh my gosh, that was very close. In fact, that might be the exact amount. I'm not positive, but... I found a calculator that I used. Okay. So I didn't want to figure out Wow, that that was very close. Anybody else have a guess? You are looking at right around thirty six thousand. It was right under thirty six thousand. It was like thirty five nine or something like. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I don't remember what the exact was, but it's right at thirty six thousand. So wow, gold star for Nicole. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> so for that fifty thousand dollar house, get that you're gonna pay over a half of what the house is worth in interest. And just so you know. 30-year uh, mortgages aren't that uncommon. A good ma majority of people have 30-year uh, mortgages. Okay, um, And a 4% interest, that's actually really good for a house. Really good. Like if you have bad credit, you could have like 5 or 6%. Like 4% isn't that bad. So, I mean, so, um, so yeah, pretty did crazy, right? You, did you know that if you have to... Um, lend money for your relatives for them to buy a house you have to charge them interest you have to what? buy law really well yeah. there's ways around it yeah. <laughs> i wouldn't call them legal ways oh. but you know <laughs> well i mean if you're caught you're in big yeah trouble. yeah you are <laughs> um yeah. so if you look at that that means you're paying excess of eighty five thousand dollars for a fifty thousand dollar house yeah. And by the way, just so you know, the cheap houses of Almogordo in the ghetto are going to cost you around $50,000. Nice houses are going to cost you about $120,000, just so you know, okay? And houses in Almogordo, the cheap one, I mean, in Tularosa, the cheap ones go for 90000 
Wow. So just so you know the realm of possibility. Yeah. All right? <laughs> and if you have like a, a bedrooms, bedrooms matter. If you have a four bedroom, it's going to sell a lot more for than a three bedroom. You know what I mean? So anyways, um, just crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So these financial lies are convenient little things left out um, on by the loans. When you go to talk to the bank and whatnot, they'll kind of just leave these things out. And... Um, Uh, so the first thing, if you buy a house for $50,000, your monthly payment will only be $250. Does anybody see and uh, know what the error know what the error is? That's of for this? 30 years. Yeah. Yes. I know what this. What? What is the error? Uh, that includes um, your insurance, your taxes. Yeah. And something else. Yeah. After insurance, flood insurance, taxes, all these different things, your mortgage, your monthly mortgage will be closer to around five hundred dollars. That's double what your principal and interest payment actually is. Also, your your monthly payments too depend on how much you have to put down on a house. The yep. more you put down, the less your payments are. Right. If you have a very small down payment, you can expect right. to pay a lot higher. Right. This would uh, two hundred fifty dollars would be on an FHA standardized loan. However, on a conventional loan, it they they require I think five or ten percent down. I'm not positive which, and it's different between a mobile home and a real home. And most banks will not do home loans on a mobile home. This is true. There's only actually one bank in this area that does that. And yeah. Western Bank. All other banks will not do home loans. Also. Other than that, you have to go through mortgage companies or through um, a deal with the owner. Yeah. <laughs> really, it, yeah. Um, you have to get finance, yeah. finance through the owner. Owner financing is really the only way to get a mobile home. And the bad thing about – I'm glad Serena brought that up because if you guys are thinking about buying a house and buying a mobile home – the bad thing about going through a mortgage company, there are, yes, there are a lot of them. However, you're going to run through places like um, Texas or through Albuquerque. I think there's only one local mortgage place besides Western is a bank, but I mean uh, uh, it's called something like Star or something like that. Um, and that's the only one in, in, that's actually based in Alamogordo. All the other mortgage companies are going to be outsourced to other places, and the problem with that, it becomes very difficult to actually deal with the people. You're just kind of a, a name on a list. It's very difficult to actually have communication with these mortgage companies. Isn't it West Star Escrow is the one in Alamo Gordo? Maybe. And also, too, you have to Could think be. about that's going to be very hard to sell when you want to sell yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're hopping ahead of me, but now, yes. Now you're – Hold on, Serena. Hold on. You're getting ahead of me. I worked at a bank. You're that's getting ahead right. of me, but holy crap. These are these are also good things to mention. I'll go ahead and very quickly mention that. Um, no, actually, I won't mention that. But yeah, very very good points. You have to think about resale or whatnot. Um, another another lie. Your car payment will only be a hundred and eighty dollars. Does anybody know where the error is in this one? No. Uh, no, actually, it depends on a lot of different things. First off, how old the uh, what year the car is, what what make and uh, manufacture the the car is. For instance, a uh, Honda bought a Honda, okay, as compared to a Ford, they're going to have different insurance rates, which is going to change your payments. Um, also, what color your car is depends, um, because really? some things are considered more or less dangerous. Like for instance, a red car would be more dangerous as let's say a black or a white car. See what I mean? Um, so then also it doesn't take into account the repairs of just naturally driving on the road. I mean, Ben just paid off his, his car loan, and he had to fix something that was going wrong. And why? Because that's what a car does. You know what I mean? It's, it's nothing wrong with, with Ben's car. Cars wear out. Um, uh, insurance, obviously. Uh, gas. It doesn't take into account at all gas. Is it a gas guzzler? Is it good on gas? We don't know. So, I mean, you, you have to actually converse with the person. They'll kind of just downplay that. Oh, well, this Hummer actually only gets like five five, uh, five miles to the gallon, but, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, and then also the re registration fees can really drive you down the, down the drain. So what people do a lot of t times is, oh, I've got the money for a car. And then they go to register it, and they're like, oh, man, I don't have the money for the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that actually happened to me once. <laughs> oh, boy. Did not expect for that old of a car to have that high of a registration charge. My bad. Um, there is free, easy mo money. All you have to do is know. Mm -hmm. 
There is no such thing as free, easy money. No such thing. It does not exist. The government will say things like this. Um, we can pay for you to go to college and it'll be free. Wrong. Um, somebody has to pay for that money somewhere. Like, for instance, Sanders' plan, I mean, as, as good as it sounds, it's actually impossible. M college can't be free. It can't be. You've got people who need salaries. You think the pro professors just go there to sit there and listen to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> they, need, they have salaries. College cannot be free. What that means is that uh, the, the uh, government will take control of it, and that means higher taxes. See what I mean? That doesn't mean that it will be free. It just means it will be pulled out of somewhere else. That makes sense. Kind of like um, our our Obamacare, okay? Oh, free or or or, or affordable, I think is what they say. Um, um, health insurance. Actually, I know a lot of people who can't even have health insurance now because it put them so high as compared to what they were paying earlier. And if you can't if you can't get insurance at all, you actually um, charge at the end of the year depending on how much you didn't have the insurance. And that's going to go up next year until it plateaus. When Ben in two years or. And something like that. It's gonna. It, it'll keep going up for a little while, but then it'll reach finally a, a, a unless it's changed. Obviously, everything's sub, subject to law, so it'll plateau at this at this amount. Um, so yeah, there's no such thing as, as free easy money. So it, money always comes from somewhere. Even if you go to the store and they say, "Oh, you get this and you get this free," no, that just means that they're charging it somewhere else or something. There is no such thing as free easy money. Once you get that into your head, economics gets a lot easier to, to, to understand. Um, so if go the government has control, there is no free trade and it will show in taxes. Free trade is the basis of capitalism, which is what America – the idea of America. America is not really capitalist anymore, but that's the idea of America. And that's this. Somebody has an idea for business, so they go for it, and it either fails or does well. And then they have another person who has a similar idea, and they do a competition. You know what I mean? Like, let's say Ford and Chevy. Right. And then whoever has the better product eventually wins out. That's capitalism. But what um, what we're talking about here with, with what the government is trying to do is they're trying to move into more of a socialist thing where the government is taking direct control over the different things, like with bell, uh, um, car ballots and, and bank ballots and those kinds of things. The, that's where the government is there, thereby taking control. In a natural capitalistic idea, the bank would have failed. Right or the car company would have failed, and then another competitor would have come up. See so, you know what I mean? That's just the, the natural. And I'm way oversimplifying that. I know that, but if you want an economics class, the college is over there. Yeah. Okay, um, there's a real, real simplified version, um, and that's the basis of capitalism. So the thing is, is you have to understand: Do you want higher taxes and free stuff, free stuff, or do you want lower taxes and to pay for stuff? See, I mean, it's going to be one or the other. For instance, um, a lot of the taxes that you're going to see, um, especially as you get older, um, Nicole, for instance, um, that, that you're going to see surface up are, are taxes that, that they're going to tell you are really necessary but really aren't. For instance, the IRS. Did you know the IRS has not been around since America was founded? They're not really not that old. They were, for, they were formed 19-something. Okay? And what they do is they tax you at the end of the year. This is an unnecessary tax. They say it's to do stuff like to repair roads and that kind of stuff, but they were actually taking care of the roads before the IRS was founded. Thereby, they don't really need the IRS to make sure that our, our, our government stays afloat. So, I mean, why? Because you, when you ha whenever you have a government, eventually there will be people, especially in a socialistic kind of setting, who take advantage of their power. Does that make sense? Yes. So all this is just to kind of give you the idea of, of economics 101, basically. Um, so a good economy depends on the flow of money. And if everything is being handed out as free, there really is no cash flow. Thereby, there will be no rich class. Everybody will, will have to share in the burden. I can give you an example of this that I actually read on Facebook that is just worth mentioning. Let's say you are, guys are all in a class, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grade you in the same way that, um, that taxes would work in a, in a socialistic kind of setting. Okay? That means um, no matter how good Zach does, if Nicole slacks off, your grade isn't going to be the A that you deserved. See what I mean? Everybody's grade will be pulled down. Does that make sense? You won't get the grade that you actually deserve. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's the same thing with the taxes. People who are working really hard and working 40 hours a week, they're not going to have the money that the people who aren't working at all are going to have because of a government handout. Does that make sense? Things like welfare and whatnot. Now, these are, these are good things, 
for those who can't work, but the problem is, in a system like ours, people take advantage of it. Right. Does that make sense? So, um, the government can offer free services. No, they can't. Buying is better than renting. Um, yeah, okay, I'll mention this one. Um, a lot of times people will tell you buying is better than renting because if you're renting, you're throwing away your money. Do you guys kind of understand the basic idea there? Who feels like that here? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Well, the truth is, buying is not better than renting. Let's say, for instance, you're going to move. You can't move now. You're tied to that place for at least 30 years. Oh, I'll sell my house if it sells. If it sells. You can't guarantee what the market's going to do in the future. See what I mean? And if the market is down, that means nobody is buying. And if nobody is buying, you can't sell your house. Okay? Do you know what my dad used to do in Edgewood? He used to build houses. Well, the economy crashed. It's nothing to build. People aren't buying houses. <laughs> See what I mean? Not always better buying. Um, also, it's a lengthy process. To buy a house is a very lengthy process. Not just in, 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 in negotiating the price, getting approved for the loan, going through all the credit loopholes, doing all these different things. It's a very lengthy process. But then when you actually get the loan, you know, you're looking at a 15 to 30 year uh, payment plan. That's a, that's a lengthy process. See what I mean? Whereas with renting, you don't have to worry about that. If you need to move, go. Give your 30 day notice and off you go. Here's another thing is fixing it. If anything in your house breaks, you fix it. Or you pay to have someone else fix it. If you are in a rental and it breaks, the landlord fixes it. See what I mean? Well, don't forget the landlord. That's why they charge monthly higher so they can afford to. Well, yeah, but actually there are state laws that you can't raise the, raise it too much. Yeah. You can only raise it by a um, um, a reasonable amount within so long of a period. And if you continually raise it and raise it and raise it, they can actually take you to court. Little known fact: a lot of a lot of people who rent don't know that. Um, also, with renting, all you need is, is rent insurance, which costs, costs I think five to ten bucks somewhere in there per month, somewhere in, around there, and it covers all your things. Whereas the homeowner has to insure the whole property and the things on the property. All right, I have a fifty something thousand dollar house in Alamo. I have it insured for a hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Why? Because that's the cheapest I can insure it. <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> you see what I mean? That's a problem for me, isn't it? Um, so buying isn't buying isn't always better than renting. Consider before you buy. Just think. Think about the process. Okay? Just think about it. I'm not saying buying is bad. I have two houses. Buying is not bad. But have foresight and understand whether it's the right thing for you at this time before you buy. Um, also as a as a note a note of warning, if you're in a relationship of any kind, I don't know why I have to mention this, but you see, you see people who are in, in, in like dating, for instance, and they go and get a car loan, and the boyfriend all gets home and is like, "Oh, you have a car, fantastic!" Have you guys never seen this before? <laughs> and then, the, and then, and then uh, the woman ends up showing up in the in the, in the pastor's office. So we're having uh, problems in our relationship. No, I didn't guess that one. <laughs> Anyways, um, <clears throat> so that's just some financial lies right there. Um, hopefully it'll help you in the in the decision process. So, what is an amortization amortization schedule? Yes, uh, that's specifically an amortization schedule. And amortization is a little bit different, but we don't really get into that because I really don't see the need for talking about that here. Um, but like she said, it'll have your breakdown of your principal and in your interest. And the more you pay, the longer you pay on your loan, the principal will drop. Does that make sense? The how much you owe, which is called the principal, will drop because you're paying on it, right? But with with the less that you owe, the interest will drop. That's how um, Gracie got um, nine hundred dollars instead of five hundred dollars on that car loan. Excuse me. Because um, um, if it was charged the same amount of interest the whole way through the mortgage, you'd pay a good deal more than you were paying. Rather than your thirty-six thousand dollars, you'd be looking at like sixty. Over it doesn't matter. Over sixty thousand dollars in interest, but it's not it's not figured like that. As the as the print as how much the you owe on the house drops, the interest will drop, which means how much you're paying monthly on the house increases. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's like this. Here's your principal, which is what the house is, and here's the interest, which is the money you're charged for having the loan, right? right? 
But as the principal goes lower, let's say it's it, you bought it for fifty thousand, but you owe forty five thousand dollars less. Well, so there's less money out on the mortgage, so the interest that you're that you're charged every month will will be lower. Does that make sense? Which means that the that you you'll be saying paying the same thing every month though. Which means more of the money will be going towards the principal and less of the money will be going towards interest the longer you pay on the mortgage. Does that make sense? Then you have any questions about that? So an amortization schedule is a sheet that shows the loan payments, exactly what, what uh, Gracie just said. And it'll, it'll show the breakdown of what it would hypothetically be if you stay on the same payments. However, you can pay more on the mortgage than you need to, and, the, and you'll pay less in interest, and it'll be a cumul um, cumulative on interest because you didn't just pay more for that month. See what I mean? The, you paid more for that month, but it dropped interest on all the payments in the future. Does that make sense? Because there was less of a principal to be charged interest. Does that make sense? So when you pay early on a, on a mortgage, it helps you at that time to, to, to lower the principal left, but then for the rest of the period of the mortgage, you get charged less interest. You can buy a house on a 30-year mortgage and have it paid off in five. Unless – now get this. You're going to want to write this somewhere on your sheet. Some loans do not allow an early payoff. They charge you a fee, so you have to read the mortgage before—I mean, the loan—before you sign it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Also, watch out for these very, very bad words: balloon payment. Mm -hmm. What that means is, at the end of, the, of however long the period is, you have to pay the remaining balance, including the interest, at that time. Okay, so let's say you have a five-year mortgage with the balloon payment. That's a terrible deal. That means for five years you're going to be paying on whatever, however much they're putting towards the principal, and at the end of those five years you better have the rest of it with interest paid down. Now with interest, that means if you bought it for fifty thousand dollars, add the interest to it, so you owe them like sixty thousand. That means you owe them more at the time of the balloon payment than you did when you took out the loan in the first place. See what I mean? Write those words down: balloon payment. If you ever see that on a loan, run for the hills. All right, run for the hills. Um. And just as a side note, I don't know if I put this in here anywhere else. Do not ever, 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 okay, listen very, very closely to, to me on this. I, you don't know how many people have, have come to pastor over the – and don't even worry about it – with this problem. Never co-sign a loan. Never have anybody co-sign a loan with you. Never go into business with family and never go into business with friends. If you have a rental, never rent it to family or friends. Never. You understand this? You, you, you're going to do – this is how it's going to go because it happens every single time. You're going to try to do them a favor. Somehow it's going to backfire, and either you're going to be lost, uh, have a loss on your hands or there's going to be problems in, in, the, in the friendship. And this is why. Because if you are a landlord, you have to do things to maintain the integrity of the property so, you, so it doesn't go down in value. But if you know the person on a more familiar tone, it's very difficult to, let's say – Get the money? Does that make sense? And then they leave on bad terms and, oh, no, I cleaned it before I left. And then you go and it's like, eh, is that poop? You know what I mean? <laughs> bad things. You don't know how many bad deals I've uh, witnessed. And then co-payment. Co I mean co-signing. Uh, co co That's where somebody decides to take out a loan and they can't get it by themselves because of either their credit score or their age or whatever. Okay. So then you go alongside and you say, I am co-signing that, which means I am equally responsible, responsible right. liable would be the correct right. word, uh, for this loan. Which means that if they fail to pay it, your credit is on the line. Does that make sense? Let me give you an example that I've seen a hundred times. Parent and child. You don't know how many times I've seen this. The parent thinks that they're doing their child a favor by co-signing the loan. And then two or three years later, they can't make the payment. And it's all lost, or the parent has to pick up the rest of it. And usually, I don't know about you, but usually by the time you've had kids, you're so depleted of money, you don't have anything to give them. Right. Serena, would you say that's true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Kids cost a lot of money. Anyways, um, I don't remember if I put that in there, so I wanted to hurry up and get that in there. What is credit? What is credit? Yes, correct, yes. C 
Credit is hypothetical money someone temporarily allows you to use for a price. That's what credit is. Very good answer, Gracie. Um, what I mean by hypothetical money is like, for instance, when you go to a bank and you have a credit card, they're not actually going to give you cash. It's going to be a card that says that you have this much money guaranteed from the bank. So you're going to buy things on that, and you didn't actually have the money to buy it. So it's hypothetical money. Does that make sense? Um, but the bank can back it just in case you don't aren't able to pay it. They're, they, they're able to back it. However, they will charge you for this. <laughs> yeah. um, but good answer, Grace. What is interest? Charge you to borrow that money. Yes, uh, yes, it is the money charged for using credit. Get this, you won't don't have to be charged interest if you don't use credit. When I say that to some people, they act really shocked. Like there's ways of not being charged interest. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> very good answer. I'm I'm very impressed. All right. What are depreciating items? Items that lose value when you take possession of them. Very good. Give me an example. A car. Once you drive it off the lot, it immediately decreases in yes. value. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other examples? Probably a mobile home. Huh? Yes. Oh, buddy. Yes. Yeah. Houses you can get to increase in value, but mobile homes, eh, no. After they hit about 10 or 15 years, banks won't even touch them. Even the banks that, that do loan out on them. Mm -hmm. Any other examples of depreciating items? Ooh, electronics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How about that iPhone 1? Remember how expensive <laughs> that was? <laughs> Do you know anybody who has an iPhone 1 now? You know why? Because they stopped doing updates for it. So you can't. It's not worth anything now. <laughs> Anyways, what are examples of an item that is not depreciating? Something that does not lose value? Well, you said a house. Yeah. Um, Can, yes. Can be. Key, key word there, and key, key phrase, yeah. can. <laughs> Maybe art? Okay, depending, but yes, it, it could. Increase in value. Um, sorry, go ahead. It's about jewelry. It can be. Now, here, here's a lot of things, though. Silver and gold, like, hypothetically, it could come in, in handy in the case of the economic collapse. However, when buying silver and gold, the price fluctuates, and when selling it, now now write this down because a lot of people just try to buy up silver and gold thinking that they're going to, oh, I'm cleared, I bought silver and gold. Right. Silver and gold can, can go for less than you got it for, mm -hmm. and in some cases less than it's worth. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you understand that? Which means it's not your, your, your one saw clear all, is it? Right. See what I mean? So be careful with buying up silver and gold. Can be of benefit, can. But it can also dig you into a huge hole trying to save up a hypothetical a hypothetical scenario that may or may not happen. So be careful with that one. I'm not going to say don't do it, but, you know. Um, anything that loses value with time. Very good answers, you guys. Very good time. Uh, what is debt? It's what you owe. Yes. It's what you owe. Yeah. The status of having unpaid accounts, owing someone, the thing is not your own. Now, this is something people don't understand. How many houses do I own? None. 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 How many houses do the are the do the are the banks holding for me? Two. Two. If I stay faithful with my payments, eventually I will own them. See the difference there? Mm -hmm. If I have a car on a loan, is it my car? Okay. No. That's another added benefit to adding without and buying without credit is the thing is actually your own. Because remember, loans can be recalled for different things, okay? And whatever you do, let me just throw this in there. Avoid like a plague those quick cash loans. They The interest rate is – I don't want to get into interest rates really right now, but the interest rate is so high you'll never repay it if you had to take it out in the first place. Um, so – is all interest figured the same way? No. No? Okay, how How not? When you have the um, one where it can fluctuate interest rate, depending on how the, like, uh, yeah, the fixed rate, and then you have the, what is it? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 
Grace is talking about you know the the way that sometimes when you get when you get um, something on inter uh, something on credit, uh, the interest rate will be this much for this amount, but then it'll go up or up or down depending on different factors. Does that make sense? Um, usually up though. Anybody else know anything about interest rates? All right. Um, an interest rate is, is okay. So there's a percentage, right? And that's going to be how much off the credit is going to be charged. For instance, when I say a 3% interest rate, that means 3% of the principal that was originally uh, put on the credit. Does that make sense? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, but also it's figured differently. Some, some are figured annually, which means by the year, whereas some are, are figured um, monthly. See what I mean? And what that means is you'll be charged a different interest rate depending on... Uh, how much you owe at the end of the year, depending on how much you owe at the end of the month, and in some cases, how much you end up owe at the end of the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I originally was was in, in in talks about buying this house, the the interest was was figured by the day, and there was a balloon payment after three years. See what I mean? So. The interest rate, not the interest rate, the interest rate change, change stays the same, but the ch amount of interest charged, basically, okay, you are charged interest for not having the loan paid off per day rather than per month or per year. Does that make sense? Like, let's say, for instance, you've got a, a monthly uh, mortgage and you're, you're charged, let's say, 100 bucks per month on that. Well, instead of charging you per month in your monthly payments, it's per day. Yes. So let's say you owe a dollar a day in interest. See what I mean? So you're charged one dollar for that. That's thirty days per day. But however, you're never going to get charged one dollar for interest. That was just an example. Um, okay. Um, so then it's figured different differently depending on um, month, month, year, that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? And also, like Gracie was talking about, there's some that will change over the course of the loan. There's some that won't. If you have a question about the mortgage that, that you're going over, ask or look it up. Don't ever sign anything unless you've read it all the way through and you fully understand it. Because what a lot of people do is they don't want to feel stupid or they don't want to whatever. A lot of times what I hear often, most often is I didn't want to feel stupid. The guy hovers over you mm -hmm. and kind of pressures you, mm -hmm. and he kind of makes you feel like you don't know what you're talking about. He kind of makes you feel insecure. You know what I mean? It's it's a sales tactic, and so they kind of rush you into this thing. To, they they kind of try to get you to before you can think about it. You know, hop on it because the deal's going to change. And it is true that your interest rate will change from one day to the next to, until you finalize the loan. Your interest rate will change. If you're going to go get a house, this day could go in. You could be getting like a 2.5 percent interest rate, and the next way next day will be a 2.7. So, I mean, that's possible. That that's kind of stuff does happen. Um, uh, but a lot of times they'll try and pressure you and stuff before you can actually think it through. So if, especially if you're signing something and you feel stupid, that's the first warning sign. Stop. Stop. If, the, if you feel stupid, it's because they're trying to make you feel stupid, which is already a bad sign. Okay? Um, and like I say, you understand before you sign. If I hadn't have understood and just signed out of out – of, I would have had to pay this off by next year. Yeah. By next year, I would have had to have the, the whole eighty thousands on this oh. on this house paid off. Plus interest. Plus interest. Yeah. We're looking at a, at a hundred plus thousand dollars. See what I mean? <laughs> that is an insane amount of money to pay at one time. Uh -huh. And just a newsflash: if you have a mortgage out already, a, a bank is not going to be willing to hand you out another one, <laughs> unless you have the funds to cover it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, do some banks slash credit cards charge you to have an account? Yes. 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 yes, they do. Um, look very carefully at this, and you know, some people like Wells Fargo, for instance, are masters at sliding in fees okay. without letting you know what this. What's this? Oh, okay. Well, let me give you a perfect example. I, I have a free account. I made sure that they didn't put me on that other account. Um, and then after a few months, all of a sudden, there's this thing that's being charged my account every month. And I call them and say, what's this? Oh, well, you had this on your account, and it was free for the first three months. And uh, then it was charged. And I said, I didn't want that. And they said, oh, well. And I said, so you need to refund me that money. 
always ask for a refund. Okay, don't let them push you around because creditors, that's their job. Banks, that's their job. They want to squeeze every penny out of you because that's how they make money. They're a business. They're not a, they're not a charity. A business isn't concerned about you. They're concerned about profits. That's what a business is. This is a capitalist government, preferably. Um, <laughs> um, what was this thing? Oh, yes. So I, I got the, I got the money, re money refunded uh, because... I didn't just settle with, with the first no. They told me no a couple times, but eventually you move up the chain. You go talk to a manager, you go talk to et cetera, et cetera, until you get the money back. See what I mean? Right. Um, here's another example. Wells Fargo's like, we're going to get – would you like – um, what do they call it? Overdraft protection. I'm like, sure. All right, that sounds like a deal. That way you won't be charged when you're overdrafted your account. And they lied to me. What that means is that you charge less because there's a $35 overdraft protection fee. Per overdraft. Uh -huh. Thankfully, it doesn't happen that much. But occasionally, you make a mistake with your account and you forget that you left. You know what I mean? Like last time, I was I had an overdraft uh, fee. I was eleven cents shy. I was like, oh my bad. I I, I was off by eleven cents. My bad. <laughs> See what I mean? Um, yeah. So, anyways, so cars depreciate faster than than you pay your loan. Serena. Brought up, brought up the thing about depreciating, uh, depreciating, just depreciate, depreciating, eating, depreciating items. Goodness sakes. Ah, okay, she brought that up. Um, cars will depreciate faster than you can pay them off. Um, for instance, on the eight thousand dollar car loan. Okay, now remember we said it was for four years, right? I think. Um, you have to pay your five hundred dollars interest, but by the end of those four years, your eight thousand dollar car is going to cost less than four thousand dollars. Yeah. Cars are honestly they're robbery. If you buy a brand new car, you are being ripped off. Let's say you get a, not a good deal on a car and you buy and Unless buy it for you pay it off. Right. Like right. Right there. <laughs> right. If you it, right. Well, yeah, but even then, you have to realize, okay. So, let's say the car costs $25,000. You pay it all cash. You drive it off the lot, it's not even worth $25,000 yeah, anymore. No. See what I mean? So, the best option for people who don't have the money. This is what I do. Wait for a car to be about five years, four or five years old. Okay, then look for certain things. How many owners has it had? Is the title clean? Is it in good condition? Um, has it had regular oil changes? You know what I mean? Do that kind of stuff, and then you actually end up paying less in the long run. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Plus, when you go to resell it, you're not going to be in for a rude awakening. I know a lot of people who buy, you know, these fifty thousand dollar F three fifties. We, you know, all this big souped out stuff, or I don't know how much they cost, like $70,000, I guess, I don't know, whatever. And then they go to sell it, and it's like, yeah, that's not worth that. But that's how much I own my car loan. I'm sorry to tell you that your car is worth, worth less than you're paying on it. I'm sorry, there's no easy way to tell you that. See what I mean? So, yeah. But there's another cautionary tale. Don't buy things when other people have a loan on it. Because they'll be forced to go – they won't be able to go any lower than that amount, and it will be more than you would have paid for it. Another little cautionary tale. There's, there was somebody who just a little while ago selling um, a Ford uh, Escape in La Luz, and they, they wanted $4,200 $200 for it. I looked it up on Kelly Blue Book, and it was worth $2,300. That's $2,000 over. Check before you buy. Know what you're talking about. Honestly, know what you're talking about. I didn't know what I was talking about, so I looked it up. And I found out it was uh, twice what it was worth. See what I mean? Always check. Um, should you check your bank account every few days? Dave Ramsey, obviously, is the kind of guy, is the guy that says he only checks it, checks it once a month. What do you think? Should you check it frequently or no? Oh, yeah. I check oh. every few days. Why? Zach, you first. Uh, just in case... You know, either, you know, with their own math, see if everything's going to do what their math is, mm -hmm. compare it to their math, mm -hmm. and see if it's right. Yeah. Good. Uh, Nicole? Just make sure no money's just take, being taken out that's not supposed to be taken out. Yeah, that's true. Like fraud? Fraud, yeah. yeah. Okay. Check. Don't uh, if you have a bank card. Well, well not necessarily. Uh, um, you can you can get somebody's information through checks, through cards, um, through social security, yeah. through um, I believe they they're smart people out there. Yeah. 
they can do stuff all online, like cross-reference your Facebook with all kinds of online yeah. information. Like, I don't understand how they do it, but they do it, so... You can Google anybody's name and the times are changing. There are a lot of really smart computer people. Sadly, I'm not one of them, so I don't understand how it works. But I do know that uh, hackers do know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. um, what were you going to say? Um, well, one is I do a lot of uh, like online shopping, so to make sure stuff clears. Yeah. Um, also, to make sure that there isn't extra charges through that means for on. So, or fraud or you've had extra charges on something from online? <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> so the correct answer is yes. Stolen information, which is what uh, you said. Mischarge amounts, which is what you said. Um, bank fees or other things, which kind of goes hand in hand with what you were saying. Um, yes, I check my bank account every day or every other day because I don't trust my bank. I don't trust the people who charge my card. I don't trust the t the tellers at the store who swipe it five times. I'm like, did that charge me five different times, or is that one charge? <laughs> I like to know. Well, and like in in Del Rio, the the people that work at the gas station and you know, stuff a lot of times, they would uh, get your information off your card and they swiped it. And Jason had mm. taken uh, over yeah, him several true. times. Did you hear? Did you hear yeah, what you just said? Anybody, uh, yeah. Tellers or uh, cashiers, anybody can. Is overdraft protection on a standard account free? No. Uh -huh. There is usually a fee. Usually. Wells Fargo is not alone on this. Usually there's a fee. Um, are all banks and credit cards the same? No. How, how not? Let's start. I heard you first, so how are they different? Well, they all charge different fees. Yeah. Okay. Um, some may charge fees. Or certain things that other banks may not. Give give some examples too, if you could. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Like some banks may have a free checking account if you have a savings account. Some um, banks don't do that. Um, Wells Fargo. You know, if you have direct deposit, you get your bank account for free. Some banks are not like that. You know, you always have to do your research to yeah. make sure what they're charging, what their fees look like, how much they're charging for their bank accounts. Some charge, you know, different amounts for children, for adults, for seniors, mm -hmm. um, military. They're just, they're all different. Um, some charge different um, interest rates on their loans. Some require different down payments on loans. Uh, Wells Fargo, char or not Wells Fargo, Western Bank requires 20% down on all home loans. That's that's really high. Yeah. yeah. And um, so obviously, you know, I don't want to go there for a home loan. You know? <laughs> all, all banks are different, and they're all in competition with each other. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. And then to make it even more confusing, Bank 34 took out my home, home loan. I got it through them. But then banks like Bank 34 sell it out to banks like Wells Fargo. Yeah. They buy a lot, a group, of mortgages, and so that way, see what I mean? And it's cheaper for them to do that than for them to sign up individual people. And that's not just home loans. Right. Wells Fargo denied me a home loan, whereas Bank 34 said, sure, just so that Wells Fargo could then turn around and buy it from Bank 34. And another thing that goes hand in hand with what Serena was talking about was some accounts are free if you have so X amount in it. Yeah. Like, oh, this savings account is free, but you have to have at least $300 in it. Dollar yeah. There's, it's usually it's $500 gonna, it's gonna vary. is usually the standard for a free account. $500 are minimum to keep the account free. Yeah. And um, yes, Wells Fargo um, get, sold my home loan, or not my home loan, my school loan to uh, um, to another yeah. loan company. And all of a sudden I was getting bills from this other company. I was like, what, what, what is this? And I had to call them and they were like, well, what Wells place Fargo. Is this? <laughs> they didn't even notify me until right? I all of a sudden randomly get this yeah. bill from no. another, you know, company. So. Yeah, I don't even I remember who my that. original um, borrower was. Yeah. Ugh. So the short answer is no, they're not. Um, also, here's another little thing. When you're opening up a bank account, um, there are pros and cons to local versus nationwide. Okay, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I keep with the smaller banks like OFCU. That could bite you in the butt later on. Yeah. It could, depending. Okay, here's an example. Um, I knew somebody who had a local bank, 
where they were, but then they went to college in Texas, and they couldn't get their money out from anywhere. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. Well, Wells Fargo came in handy then, because Wells Fargo is nationwide. Right. Yeah. See what I mean? In fact, I think they might actually be compatible with out of nation too. I'm not positive. I think so. But not important. More of the story being, wherever I move in America, I'm covered. Right. And here's the thing. If you open up a new bank account, your credit score will drop. Okay. Credit scores, and we'll get to this in a minute, are based off of how long your account has been open. So if you change banks, they're going to see a new account, and your credit score is going to go down. Oh. See? Huh. Even though same person, same same faithfulness in paying your bills, doesn't matter. And uh, just so that we're all clear, because I know Dave Ramsey is kind of popular down here, so let me kind of clarify. Credit... Okay, not important. Um, credit is necessary. In, 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 the American, in, in America, the way it is now, credit is necessary. People like Dave Ramsey are going to come along and they're going to say credit is not necessary. You can have no credit. Well, hypothetically, that sounds real great, but it's not. Ben, what, what are some of the things that you found you have to get, have credit score just to be able to do? <laughs> what was it that you were saying specifically, though? Um, um. Renting cars. Right, right, right. Like, like to, to rent a, a car, um, you have to have credit. Um, I can't think of any other examples right now. We were talking about the other day, and I can't believe we like forgot all that we were talking that, about. That class. Yeah. There was a bunch of things that we had listed. Who was it that was wanting to pay for a car with cash, and they wouldn't let Oh, me? right, right, right. Um, this, this lady that I work with, her mother ex-mother-in-law uh, went to pay for a vehicle she had cash for it yeah but she didn't have any credit uh-huh and they wouldn't sell it to her she had to have her son co-sign on it even though she was paying cash yeah because she didn't have credit see what i mean in america in, in the society of america you have to have credit you have to it's just how it's gonna work i'm sorry but that's just how it's gonna work um going even at a hotel you have to have a credit card in order to get a room uh, well, yeah, some credit cash right. Front, yeah. Right. Uh, plus uh, security in case anything happens to the room. Yeah. So you're paying like almost double just to uh, just so they'll so so usually take a credit card for like incidental purposes. But right. But if you just you can just pay cash for a room. You can yeah. do that. Yeah. But they'll cut all the yeah. everything extra off from you. You you don't even have access to that extra stuff because you just pay cash and yeah. also uh, a lot of cell phones. I don't know if it's like this anymore. Uh, it yeah. used to be you could not get a cell phone without good credit yeah. and cable. Hmm. What? I, I had yeah. to pay two a two hundred dollar fee to get because I didn't have. It wasn't that I had bad credit. I didn't, didn't have, have credit. credit. Yeah. So I had to pay two hundred dollars just to get cable. Just to get it hooked up. Yeah. So I, I know you may have heard something about credit being bad or something like that. Credit is not bad. It's people don't learn how to correctly pay their credit, and so they are in a bad place. Like the person who has outstanding balance on their credit card. Well, that's bad for them because they don't understand how credit works. So anyways, um, is leaving an unpaid balance on your credit card worth it? And as far as does it raise your credit score enough to, to balance how much you're paying in interest? No? Why not? brings it down they because they they say um if you're using 30 percent more of your credit that decreases your 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 credit score if you no. go over a certain percentage um i think my credit card is if, if i'm using 30 percent more it goes down the more i go over that 30 percent the lower my credit score but did you know that when you go to get a credit card they'll tell you to leave a balance on it because that'll yeah. help your credit score lies uh, but, but you should you should maintain some kind of balance. Um, as long as it's under the percentage. Right, uh, uh, it's right. Nice. that percentage she's talking about. Because, like, Jason, when, when he moved to Texas, he paid off every loan that he had. And he, he, he was there for six months. Big mistake. And, and he didn't have any credit going. Yeah. And his credit went dormant, which was basically like having no credit yeah. at all. So, he so if he would have kept a low balance. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you hear what you just said? Yeah. If you pay, remember, credit score is, is your credit score is basing is saying how well this person handles credit. That's what your credit score is. If you don't have any loans, you don't have a credit score. Right. See what I mean? Because your credit score is saying how well you balance debt. Right. 
So what Ben is saying is you don't want to not have any credit because you're going to do away with your credit score. And then you worked, you got to 800 credit, you got to, your credit score is at 800 now? Fantastic! But you better maybe take out another loan or have accumulated balance on your, on your credit card or something. Well, I thought that paying off my school loan, I was like, this is awesome. My credit score is going to go up. It didn't. It went down because that was a closed account. Yeah. Now, your credit score isn't as high because you only have yeah. four open accounts yeah. instead of five. I'm like, what? I thought you didn't want me. Yeah. I thought you wanted to see I could pay bills. Yeah, you have to have a loan. It has to be open for however for so long. Okay, it can't be closed out. And, and what it closed out means is that whether it's a new newly opened or newly closed loan, it's going to drop your credit score. See what I mean? So, um, all things considered... No, because credit cards charge too high of interest. Uh, your 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 typical credit card is going to run you somewhere around like twelve for really good ones and like twenty something for for decent ones and above that for bad ones. Um, so if you think about that, that's that's a lot of money. Twelve to twenty something percent on a on a pretty decent card. That's that's a lot of money. See what I mean? Well, let's just say ten percent. Okay, and you t you paid something on your credit with two thousand dollars, okay? Let's let's break this down. What is one percent of two thousand dollars? Two dollars. No, twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. What is ten percent? Two hundred dollars. So we're talking about over two hundred dollars charged yeah. for that two thousand dollar charge uh -huh. in interest. That's just ten percent. So if it, if your typical credit card is around. 20 something percent, we're talking about how much money would that be? $400. And then, See? imagine, because I, I, I've seen people get into this, you're only able to pay the minimum um, allowed payment, which is like $50. So $200 interest, you're only able to pay $50 on that that month. So now it's $150. And then the next month, it's over $200 because the interest payment on there is more. And you just keep getting further and further into debt. Normally, that's not on, on your stand, on your on your real po uh, uh, popular banks like Wells Fargo and whatnot. That's usually on more of the like quick cash kind of things going on. But that is still a factor that you do need to be aware of how high your interest rate is. Good good note though. That is that is important to note. Don't ever take out quick cash. Quick, yeah, those quick <laughs> loans. Title loans. Yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh! Never take a title loan. Don't do it. <laughs> there was a guy that I knew. Yeah, that he, uh, that right now. Uh, terrible. What were you saying, Jack? He's got disability uh, back payment, right? Yeah. And so he bought a PT Cruiser. Well, then he wanted to get a bunch of electronics, uh -huh. but he didn't have any money left. So he took out a title. Oh, so ooh. he ended up getting his car repoed, plus they took the stuff away because it was like from one of those rent-a-center type places. Mm. Oh, no. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like that. I, I don't like that. So things that lower your credit score, new loans, checking your score. Yeah, get this. If you check your credit score, it lowers your loan. I mean, it lowers your score. Yeah. Okay. If, if it, It's okay to check it like once or twice every blue moon, but don't check it frequently because that will drop it. For instance, when you're getting a home mortgage, they'll tell you not to check your credit score because they're going to check it when you first go in, then they're going to check it again um, when, before the loan finalizes. And if you've been messing with your credit score or if you have any, any new purchases or any, anything big or anything at all, uh, it's going to show on there and then, then you may be denied for the loan that you were previously approved for. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, missing payments is a big no-no on your, on your credit score. Uh, not having loans. So how do you get better credit? Anybody have any ideas? Clo go away, jeez. Anybody have any ideas? <laughs> Besides what you just saw on the screen? Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have any credit, and I just took out a, it's called a CD loan. Uh-oh. You're going to be sad about what I have on the side. Uh -huh. I did a CD loan through my bank that I worked at, and I just put a small amount of money down like a $500 CD, and then they gave me $500, and I made payments on it, and that's how I that's how I started building credit. Are you saying how to build credit or how not mm -hmm. to build No, credit? how to build credit. Oh. I just hate CDs, so. Um, 
they're they're not too bad. But you what? charge everything monthly. That's how I build my credit. What were you gonna say? Uh, I was gonna say pay, uh, make your payments on time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what she was just saying. Yeah. Any other ideas? Okay. We'll just plow through this. By consistently being in debt with a lengthy loan while still paying faithfully. That's basically <laughs> how, you, how you get a good credit score. Now, a lengthy loan is anything that's over, like, you know, five years, five, ten years. That's going to be a lengthy loan, see what I mean? Um, yeah. Um, so credit basically means how well you handle your debt. We already went over this. Is credit necessary? We already went, about it, went through this. Yes, without a credit score, you won't be able to buy, rent certain things. Um... Buy on credit with money you have and instantly pay it out. Okay, yeah, there's there's something new that we haven't talked about yet. When you buy something on your credit card, um, have the money set aside first, and then when you buy it, pay it off. See what I mean? That way the money isn't isn't doubling. Boy, this is, this is what people do. Let's say they have $100 in their account, and they have credit for $100, for instance. So then they'll buy something for $100 on their credit score, I mean, on their, yeah, on their credit card, but then they'll spend the other $100. So they just double spent the money. Does that make yeah. sense? What you, what you should do is spend the hundred dollars and then pay it off with the hundred dollars you have. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, don't double spend. Okay. So I had no idea you were gonna bring that up. Um, <laughs> this is the only thing that I agree with. Not the only thing. The almost the only thing that I agree with with Dave Ramsey on. Okay. And that that's this. Savings accounts and CDs are a waste of money. Let me explain. Let me explain. On your typical savings account, let's say you have a really, really good savings account. Do you know how much interest you're going to get on that really good savings account? Maybe 3.3%. Okay. Now, just to put this in perspective, how high, I mean, how, by rate, how quickly does your money become less valuable? Daily, no rate percentage wise. Somewhere around the neighborhood of like I think it's five percent currently, which means that for your savings account to be building enough interest where you get paid enough to actually make it worth your time, it has to be over that five percent that your money is becoming less valuable. So you need an interest rate with like around 9% to make it worth your, worth your time? And remember that your credit is being charged, your credit card is being charged for over 12%. See you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which means literally you're becoming poorer by the second. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> um, so the interest rates are not high enough. Um, and as far as CDs, I am really sorry. I did, did not mean to rag, rag no, something okay. that you had done. Um, I, I agree with Dave Ramsey on this. Um, basically, with, with a CD loan, they're going to give you a small um, interest, in, interest. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, credit b boost, but it's not going to be enough to pay for the interest that you charged your in the CD. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Kind of. I would like to point out, I worked at the bank. So I got an extremely low interest rate. I am not criticizing what I you did, Serena. That's why I've said a thousand <laughs> times. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had no idea you were going to say something about a CD. I had no idea. No, I don't have a CD currently. I, I don't. I Because I agree, you get charged too much interest for a CD. So I don't personally have a CD. That was just the means that I used because I had bad credit. It wasn't that I had no credit. I had bad credit. Wait, didn't you just say it wasn't that I didn't have bad credit as I had no credit? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, yes, Serena. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Oh. <laughs> but no. I am just kidding when I'm that saying. Was for the people. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was no, just kidding. Because <laughs> I had bad credit because I made bad choices in my life. And so I could not get approved to get a credit card. I couldn't even get approved for a loan to buy our my new couch that I have now. They wouldn't even give me a loan on a piece of furniture. So, um, this was what they had suggested at work because they were willing to give me the loan. Mm -hmm. They were willing to do the loan for me and give me a, a, a lower interest rate because, you know, because yeah. I worked there. So, um, so yeah. No. I, 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 I do agree with you. CDs are, are not worth it because of the interest. 
why if you're trying to save money, why are you going to be charged on right. saving money? It doesn't right. make sense. So they, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so how can you be free of your financial burdens? Hmm. Credit, credit aside, how can you be financially free? Go ahead. Save money. Not let your extra money after paying bills be free money, be it saving money. Okay. Good. Anything else? Anybody else? Anything else? Anybody else? Anything else? Go live in a cave in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Spend wisely, you know? look for deals, use coupons. Good, good. All good. Don't just buy on a whim. All good things. Pay things off. Okay. And make sure you keep up with payments. Mm. Sell things you don't need. Okay. All good. Anything else? Did you two have anything else? Because you were really you were going tag team, so I don't want to cut you off. One more. Go without things you don't absolutely need. Prioritize. Good. Good. So all of what Gracie just said fits in the third category: wise man management of everything. Everything that Serena and Gracie just talked about <laughs> was wise management. All, all very good things too. Um, but there are two other things that are very important: giving. Giving to missionaries, giving to the needy, giving. To be financially free, you have to realize that money is nothing more than a tool. Yeah. To be financially free, you have to realize that God has given you the money. Given you the money. Does that make sense? God has given you the blessings that you have, and it's up to you. Does that make sense? God gives so we can give, basically. God gives us salvation so we go out and tell other people about salvation, right? So, I mean, it's the idea... Giving so you can give. So let's look at some passages about giving. Matthew 25. Uh, in verses 31 through 36, says this. Um, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will um, separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you do this? So anyways, are you kind of getting the idea there? They gave. They had the ability, so they gave. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the first way to be truly financially free is to realize that money is a tool that you can use for God's glory. Does that make sense? You will never have contentment in seeking money. You will always have money. Uh, 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 contentment, not money. You always have contentment right. in giving it away. All right? Um, uh, working. Because when you work, you learn the value of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you hand and when you sit around and just expect things to be given to you, you don't respect things, you don't take care of things, you don't you didn't earn it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when you work for something, you're saving up your money, you 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 have in your goal, oh I want that, and I'm saving up my money, and you're able to buy it from your work. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a good feeling, and it helps you to take care of the thing and then it lasts longer because you took care of it. Proverbs um, thirteen eleven. And a lot of people say, oh, well, I just want easy, quick money. You will never have financial freedom if you're looking for easy, quick money. How you get financially free is by giving, by working for the money that you do have rather than stealing it, rather than t taking advantage of people, and by wise management. Proverbs 13.11 says this, Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. See, if you're always looking for that get-rich-quick team, it disappears quickly. How many people have you seen win the lottery and actually do something good with it? Save it up. Let it build up interest so they have a retirement. No. People don't do that. <laughs> they spend it. Mm -hmm. So, anyways. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 7-12. through 12. He is not happy today. Yeah, the battery. <laughs> Um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 7-12 says this, 
Um, for you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us because we were not idle when we were with you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For Basically, what he's talking about is this. When we served as missionaries to you, it's not that we weren't worthy of the pay. We, we let go of the pay so that we could show you a good example. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busybodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Kind of, you know, kind of spells it out about the benefits of working for it. And then lastly, the wise management. Um, everybody knows Matthew 6.33. Excuse me. Where is it? Here it is. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. What was that? My things. Oh, sorry, I made this echo over here, and I thought something broke. It was, it was It's like a popping sound. You know, it was really weird. Sorry. Anyways, Luke 16.10 um, says this. Through 13. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been, been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, which is money, who will entrust you, entrust you the true riches, which is the spiritual things? And if you have not been faithful in that which is in others, who will give you that which is your own? And I'll stop there. So by ignoring these three things, we waste, misuse, and lose finances. We waste because we don't see it as the tool that it is. We think that it's ours, and we and we hoard it in whichever way we see fit, and we buy things on a whim. We don't, we're, we're foolish with it. We're, we waste it in the sense that we buy things not based on what we need, but based on what we want, which, as we can know, is very fleeting. One time when I was a kid, I really, really, really wanted this toy. So I got it, and then a week later I told my mom, I wish I would have gotten that other toy. Why? Because our desires are fleeting. Um, and so, yeah, anyways. And then we, we, um, we misuse. So, yeah, we misuse because we, we don't put it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mentioned that. Okay, and then we lose finances. Some people are poor because they're just not too good with money. But then other people are poor because God makes the rich person the poor person alike. So learn the difference. Some people need to learn financial responsibility. Some people... They just need a hand up. Um, what we have is a gift from God, not something we are owed. Everything we have is a blessing. You, you have to understand your your finances is but another area that God has chosen to bless you in. So what we do is we, we think, if only I, I was making this much money at work, or if only I had this much from, from income taxes, or if only I had... I mean, fill in the blank, you guys. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person thinking these things. But the truth is that God gave you a certain amount, and that's the amount that God chose to bless you with. Be thankful for what you have and do the best that you can with it. Um, what we, what do we need to – see, you can't look at your finances as though it is your work and you're, and you're receiving that. You have to see it as a blessing from God. Well, how do you do that? Because your work, the job that you have is a blessing from God. Therefore, the money is a blessing from God. See what I mean? Not everybody has jobs in this economy. If you have a job, you should be very thankful for it. Um, uh, what do we need to survive? Food, clothes, sometimes shelter. That's what the needs of life are. Okay, everything else is a want. God doesn't give in to our demands. I wanted that bad enough, so I just bought it. Okay, well, now you don't have the money. Oh, God, please give me the money to... He just gave you the money. You decided to waste it on that thing that you just had to have right now. Or I've even seen this. When people are so impatient on buying something that they rush into a purchase and then something better came along just a few days later. It's like, you couldn't just have waited. And it's like, ah, ah. And then right when you get really irritated at the person, you do almost the exact same thing not a month later. It's like, gum. I thought I was better than them. <laughs> Anyways, um, so why does God give us money? To give to others. Anything else? 
to me for peanuts. Anything else? Because he's good. <laughs> to provide for needs, to confirm his direction, so we can bless others, and lastly, um, yeah, to show his power through trying times. Let's go that, through that one by one. To provide for our needs, because when we pray, he, he meets those needs and, and, and you know he provides for us. These would be like your bills, for instance. Um, to confirm his direction. Um, a lot of times we'll be asking, God, do you want me to do this? And we don't have the money to do it. See what I mean? Well, I'm guessing that's a no. Well, God, my credit score is jacked up. Should I buy this house? Well, let me think about this. Have you handled well your smaller loans? No? Then maybe you shouldn't get this big house loan. See what I mean? To confirm his direction. Um, and now... I do want to note that there are and Ben was and Ben and I were talking about this before. There are some times that God will will ask you to leap out in faith about money when you, you don't have the thing. That's not the regular occasion, okay? And that's usually for things like missionaries. That's usually for things like God's kingdom, big big picture. Normally, that doesn't happen with things like car loans, house loans, etc. See what I mean? Normally, that's not how that goes. Normally, if God wants you, in, uh, if God, if you need a new car, God will bring a new car by. You know what I mean? You'll have to work for it. Yes, I'm not saying I'm just going to hand you everything for free, but I'm saying I have never been in need for getting from point A to point B and not had a means of getting there. Either getting a getting a ride from a friend. There's the Z Trans right here with like what a buck will get yeah. you down Alamogordo. Uh -huh. Well, that's pretty great right there. You don't even need a car. Um, or where God just brought an awesome deal by with a car. Well, cool. See what I mean? And God's capable of doing many different things. The problem is we tend to narrow our focus because of what we want, not what you know what I mean, not what God wants. Like, well, I want this car. So you know, it's not that God brought by a good deal. It's just I want this car. Or, oh, I want this house. In fact. Tech and I were talking about this a couple months ago. How some people even go by the, go to the great lengths of driving by the house, like praying over the house and stuff. It's like, okay, <laughs> that's something. <laughs> Anyways, um, I digress. Um, so just uh, a few things about free advice here. Um, just real quick to write down. These aren't these aren't meant for discussion. These are just meant for um, reference for you guys. Um, whoops, I'm sorry, I, I skipped it. Um, Advice. First off, don't ever ask, can I buy this, but should I buy this? That's the first financial bit of wisdom that will take you very far. Never buy. ask, can I buy this? It's like when you're talking to your kids, for instance. How many times do we say things like, I can't afford that? Versus, I'm not going to waste my money on that. Oh, but mom, you don't understand. No, I'm not getting you that. That's a complete waste of, your, uh, waste of, of my money. Oh, but dad, if you would just... No, I'm not going to waste my money on that. That's a complete waste of our resources. And But then there's also some times when you just can't afford it. Like, Eli was – this Eli would come up to me. He's like, you want I want for Christmas? I was like, it's a little early, but okay. He's like, I want one of those ATVs. And I was like, a $4,000 ATV, buddy. I love you, but not that much. I don't have that money. <laughs> and, he, and then, he, and then he, he – kids are so creative, so creative. Because then he comes up to me with this. Well, you and my mom could go in together. <laughs> I'm like, um, uh, <clears throat> I get, <clears throat> that's a thousand dollars each. <clears throat> and he it's comes up only, with all these different ideas. This is only after he already came to me and said, and I was like, do you have four thousand dollars? Because I don't have four thousand right? dollars. I was like, if you want, if you want to go live outside, and I'll rent out your room. <laughs> maybe we can save up the money to uh, get you an ATV. But. <laughs> and, and then I, t I told you like, well, you you could you could work, get a job and save up your money. It's just a joke. I didn't think that you'd actually go anywhere with it. He's like, oh, I don't want to do that. And I was like. I was kidding, but now I'm a little bothered. Why don't you want to do that for your ATV? <laughs> Anyways, it's not important. It was a joke. Um, separate wants from needs. Whenever you're shopping, go through your mind and separate the wants from the needs. Okay, let, let me give you an example. I really want an iPhone. Okay, that's that's not a need. It's not a need. Um, you're going down, down the aisle. Oh, this snack looks great. That would not be a need. Okay, this is a need. I don't have food. Here's some sandwich bread and here's some sandwich meat. I'm set for lunches. Awesome. There's a need. See what I mean? And God will provide for the needs. That's why a lot of times people overlook God's blessings because they're always looking for the keep up with the Joneses rather than for the blessings yeah. of God. See what I mean? 
Um, give advice, approval before um, get advice or approval before purchases. Never just buy on your own whim. Never do this. Ask friends, ask ask family, and ask people who actually tell you and tell you what you need to hear. But also, real quick, ask people who are good with finances. Yeah. I Grace had this friend who was gonna make who was gonna make a terrible decision, and so she asked Gracie, "Hey, should I buy this?" And so Grace comes up to me and says, is, is this a good thing to buy? I said, no, that's a terrible thing to buy. Finally, she kept asking around until somebody gave her the yes that she was looking for. So she bought it, and within two weeks, the car broke down. I was like, well, I told you that not to buy that. So I mean, it's not my wife. Why, why should I care? But at the same time, I'm a little irritated because she asked me for the advice, and then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyways... Get advice or approval before purchases. Proverbs says that the, it's foolish to not have a bunch of advisors on your decisions. Where there is counselors, there is wisdom. Don't purchase something the same day you decide you want it. I need that. Have a cool-off period. A month. Do you still need it after a month? Well, okay. Never buy the same day you see. What people do is they go on Amazon. And they just cruise through Amazon, or they have a bunch of stuff in their wish list, and you just move it all to the cart, and then they just poof, buy it all at once. And then they don't even touch it once it gets there, or they touch it once and it just kind of sits there. You know what I mean? Don't buy the same day you decide that you want it. Um, that one's worth writing down on your paper, underlining, circling, putting arrows towards it. Never buy the same day. Um, and this is how you decide whether it's time to buy something. Was your life negatively affected in the last month that you decided that you were deciding by purchasing this no maybe you shouldn't buy it maybe it's not an issue of can you buy this whether you have the money or not maybe it's just an issue of whether you should see what i mean the wisdom behind buying rather than the knowledge behind buying uh, anyways um okay little things add up log every dollar I know a lot of people. I don't. I don't spend a lot of money. You buy a lot of little things. Oh, I only bought a video game on Monday, a uh, new controller on Thursday. Well, those things add up. Yeah. Even if you got them used, they add up. I mean, goodness sakes. So every single dollar make accountable. Uh, actually, this is this is something that, that Joe and I were talking about, is having a flow chart. And we'll look at that in just a second, um, where you know where every dollar is coming before you even get the dollar, and you know how much you have. For um, for either eating out or for buying luxury items or whatever, you know. And you can decide to either save those up in your savings account every month or whatever. What, what uh, we do is... Yeah, go ahead. If we spend whatever we spend, we save the receipt and we add it up with, let's say, today we spent $12.50. Mm -hmm. Whatever it's over 50 we put $13. And then, like... We add up receipts on top, right, like the whole amount of mm -hmm. what's, on, what's in those receipts. And we were like, well, it's only yeah. $600 in a pile. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Take your purchases that, that were not the necessities like the like the electric and gas. Take your necess your, 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 your spending just like going to Hastings or to the dollar store. You know, we go to the dollar store all the time. Take all those and add them up and see how much you do on just the little things. You'd be surprised. Some people eat out. Every month, and it, it costs like hundreds of dollars, and they didn't realize that, that much of their money was going down, going towards eating out. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, especially, guys, back me up on this one. When you're working a lot, uh -huh. and you just don't have the time to cook, uh -huh. and yeah. so you eat out, and it's just like a couple bucks, you think, but then at the end of the month, yeah. there's like $200 missing from your paycheck, and it's like, yeah. well, where did that go? Uh -huh. So you, Back me up on this. I'm not, I'm not the only person who yeah. did this, right? Yeah. Buddy, that used to be my biggest problem. I had to get where I had to had to fast from eating out for for a month, and then I go ahead. Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. I used to work in Kmart, and they had this you? Coke machine. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So they had this <laughs> Coke machine, and they say for workers you pay a nickel like that. if you want a drink. Uh huh. So you only pay a nickel for you know. So I'm like coming home one day. And I'm like, okay, so a nickel every day. Let's say I'm gonna work here for I would say 10, 15 years. So I kind of like added up, and I'm like, I can buy a car in 15 years for all these nickels I have. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped <laughs> drinking. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I'm yeah. Like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's funny. Um, find out the details. Do you know anything about the product? A lot of times we hear something about something, so we go to buy it, and it turns out to be a hunk of crap. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, iPhone. I had to have one because everybody had one, and they thought it was the greatest thing. I hated it. The buttons stopped working. I hate the, I hate the operating system. Everything about it I hate. I got rid of that thing as soon as I could. I went to this. I love this phone. I love it to death. It cost me 30 bucks, man. Right. 10 bucks. 15. No. Something like that. Something like that. I love it. It's great for me. And I'm not saying all you guys should switch to it. I'm saying for me, I like. I really like this phone. And if it breaks down. And if it breaks, who cares? Yeah. That's the thing I like. Yeah. On my iPhone, if I broke it, I'm like, no! <laughs> I hope you backed up your contacts. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Anyways, um... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you know about the product? Or oh, here's another one. Oh, I, I researched it for a day online. Mm, okay. Do you have any experience with it? Reviews. Right. Did, did you did you talk to anybody who had experience no. with it? I, I hear it all the time with people who, who have buyer's remorse with, with cars. It looked really good, and I, and I heard some good things about it. Did you ask anybody who, like a mechanic who works on them? No. Then how did you know there was a good car? You talk to anybody that owned the car? Right. Right. And another thing, uh, oh, like if you're buying something off of eBay or uh-huh. Amazon, look at user reviews. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, yes. Definitely. Tell Definitely. the old people Definitely. do that to do that whenever they buy from Amazon. It's like, stop buying on Amazon, you old person. <laughs> I know because I'm doing that right now because I'm looking at getting a uh, for the bar for my ear. And I, I every day I go through and I look at the new reviews. Yeah. Just to make sure I'm buying the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had two Fords in my life. I have to say I like Fords. They don't break down, but they have a bunch of little things that break. Yeah. Very annoying. Very annoying things. Not important are. things. Just little annoying things to tell you, hey, haha, I broke something. Mm-hmm. A little like like when your kid does something, just a little annoying thing. It's like, ugh, not really a big deal, but just ugh, get, it rubs you the wrong way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like that. I've had um, one Honda. And my brothers had some, and I have to say this: Honda's air conditioners suck. They're good for yeah. when they in their first couple years when you have, but then they die out, and you have to replace them a hundred times before you ever before you're done with the car. Fords, on the other hand, their ACs don't go out. I mean, occasionally you have to do maintenance and stuff on them, but they're great cars, and the engine just keeps going. Honda's also the engine you can run it you can run it ragged. The engine doesn't die. Like you can try to, you can take a hammer to the thing; it's not going to die. But then there are other cars, like for instance, I've had some friends with Dodges, and they're always breaking down. Uh, Chrysler's, same thing. Chrysler's and Buicks. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh. And don't get me started on Jeeps. <laughs> my, Gracie's dad had this Jeep, had this Jeep um, not Wrangler, the other one. Uh, uh, Cherokee. Cherokee. Oh. When they built it, they built this, um, I forget what it's called, but it's basically this thing with the wires. They built yeah, it too, yeah. too, too close to the engine um, mount, mm-hmm. and it melts the wires. That's how they designed the engine. Are you joking? So you had to get, uh, replaced, so had to get it replaced every Becky, so often. Or Becky's rig it. Becky Sheep had to go because of the transmission. Yeah. She, she had to fix the transmission. Yeah. So do you know about the products? Did you overhear about the product? Do you genuinely know the products? You know what I mean? First time home buyers do this a lot. They, they see the house. They fall in love with it before they're even approved for the loan. And they get heartbroken. Or... They fall in love with the house without asking anything about a carpenter or anything, construction worker or anything like that. And then they find a bunch of broken things in their house and like, yeah. oh, well, it looked real good. Yeah, but if you paint a turret, I bet from a distance it looks real good too. Best investment <laughs> that we've ever had with the uh, house in Alamo was to have the guy look through the house before yeah. we bought it yeah. to tell us everything that's wrong with it so you can um, do on the contract um, yeah. what needs to be fixed before you buy it. Yeah. My brother, what he did, he rented that house. Uh-huh. Got used to it and then bought it? No, he rented a house. He lived in there for like over a year, and he saw everything was going on in that house before he bought it. So yeah. it's like you live in there, and then you know. What's yeah, going got on. used to it and then bought it. Yeah. No, you know what's wrong. Within a year, you're gonna find out if there's something yeah. like right. gonna break down, right? It's old or whatever, mold or. Yeah. Um, set up an emergency funds account. Your credit card is not an emergency account. I don't know how many times Dave Ramsey says this in his class, but I mean, it's not an emergency account. You only spend on credit which you already have the money for, money to, to spend. See what I mean? Uh, emergency accounts have to be above and beyond. Um, a monthly, take a certain amount of your paycheck and put it in a savings account or something like that, where it's off to the side and you don't spend it. And then, if there's ever an emergency, car breaks down. Uh, you decide, you, you figure out, you have to redo your. Um, What's it called? The thing that you go out of the country with passport. Um, so I mean, all that comes out of the emergency fund. So you're set. 
Oh, well, it's your charge out something happened with my taxes, and now I owe the IRS. Not a big deal. You got your emergency fund. My house burned down, and I have to replace some things. <laughs> Just kidding. Not that anybody's house here would have burned down. Um, so this is what I, I, what I run into on, with people on Holloman. They look for a car and then say, I'll have the money by this day. This is not how you do it. This is how you, this is how you buy things. Discover the need. I need a car. Save up for the for the car. Then shop for the car. Then buy the car. Yeah. What people do is they uh, they go and discover a need. They instantly buy it, and then they can't save up and shop to make sure they actually got a good deal or that they had the money to buy it in the first place. Um, don't live paycheck to paycheck. Um, goodness sakes, don't live paycheck to paycheck. Set, set aside as much money as you can. Um, uh, and if you don't have enough money to set money aside, there are different ways of doing that. Decrease spending, increase income. Get another job, stop spending the money that you, that you have. See what I mean? It's not that complicated. Money, money doesn't have legs. Don't put money in your in your wallet. It'll it'll disappear. Trust me on that. Keep it in the bank. Um, never co-sign except for a spouse. I already mentioned all this. Buying what you can't afford. I already mentioned that. Um, real quickly, if you want to write any of these down, I'm not. This is just if you're interested in getting a loan. Is a loan fixed rate? What is the interest rate? How is interest figured? What is the pay repayment length? How much will you pay in the end? Is there no other way to buy for pay for it except through the through the through the loan? How much will you pay on interest? How much will your payments be with insurance and maintenance? How much of your payment goes to the principal? Can you afford it? Do you need it? Are you cold? My eyes are watering. I'm sorry. Um, so if you did anybody want to write those down? Just a real quick lo loan loan set of questions for a loan. No. Okay. Let me take a picture. Okay, go ahead. We're finishing up. Going a little long tonight. That Michael, he really knows how to keep jabbing around, doesn't he? <laughs> As if we don't have things to do tonight. Goodness sakes. Things and stuff. And stuff. stuff. Oh, don't forget about the well, stuff. Well, unless you've been through the situations, you really don't know unless someone's yeah. telling you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of mistakes can be avoided by just simply not being prideful and asking for help and from somebody who's been there done that. Yeah. You don't know anybody to ask? Ask Joe Flint. He, he knows what he's talking about. Well, I don't. I mean, because I, I I let him handle everything, so I'm like, whoa, yeah. boy, I don't know a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Ask uh, ask Pastor. He used to say, he used to he used to build houses and sell them. He he knows. I mean, I know a lot of stuff, but not as much as them. So I would ask them before you ask me, but if I'm your last choice, I can I can usually guide you in the right direction. I would personally go with Joe Flint or Dad before you went with me, but <laughs> if you if you need needs uh, need out of a pinch, I can help you. Um, so a flow chart is basically this, where you write down all your expenses and then you and then you write down your income and then you figure out how to how to adjust accordingly with ex expenses you take the highest you, you you've ever paid in the last 12 months and you add 10 10 percent to that always overbid your ex expenses with your income you take the lowest you've earned over the past 12 months and that's the only income you you, you do you always underbid your income overbid your expense why because if you want to err you want to err on the side of caution with finances you don't want to get there and find out that you underbid your expenses and overbid your finance your income does that make sense because then you're not going to have the money to back it up. Whereas if you did under uh, overbid your expenses, not that big of a deal. You have the money to cover it anyways. Then you want to prioritize ties and offering, electricity, gas, car insurance, water and trash, clothes, credit card debt, mortgage, total. See what I mean? You want to add that kind of add that up. You want to work out some kind of a, um, a system as to the order of it based on, on what you feel is biblical, not based on your whim, based on what you feel is biblical. Um, clothes you can find at thrift stores uh, for real cheap. Uh, credit card debt is important to pay off, but not as important as providing your, your family for food. So if you're in credit card debt, stop spending on the credit card. Start paying it off as best you can and cut back as best you can so you can pay it off, but make sure your family is always fed. Um, that's that's my my uh, my feeling on it based off of um, uh, my personal preference. So we're going to keep this um, for next month should we pay ties. Um, that will be – because um, it's already past 8.10, and I don't like going past 8 or 8.10, so we're going to stop it there. Um, any questions on anything we, we talked about?
Oh, uh, I see my note here. Round up on purchases. When you're going to buy something, don't say, oh, it's only $200 if it costs $250. Mm -hmm. Say $300. But that's $50 more. Oh. Round up because you're forgetting about taxes, for instance. Yeah. Oh, well, this thing is for $100, $199. $200. $200. I mean, then you would say plus tax. $200 plus tax. But that's rounding up. Always round up on expenses. Always. Mm -hmm. That make sense? So, were there no questions? Is everything kind of explained and everything? All right. 